booktube so I have yet another book haul I just I don't know I managed to pick up some more books um, in this last week of July uh, so let's get right into them uh, the first one is a Western this is a uh, the Shadow Rider series. This is Blood Sky at Morning and Apache Sundown by Jory Sherman. And I've never read this author, but it's he's the, a Spur Award winning author. And the first one is about um, Cody. He's on a mission to find the truth and um, to kill those who started this bloody chaos and save his own life. And then Apache Sundown um, is it where he is um, battling uh, this one man to prevent a massacre and um, help a warrior named uh, Coach Ice. So yeah, I, I like reading Westerns in the summer and I have one month left to do it. So hopefully I can uh, squeeze that one in. And then have a Debbie Maycomb or a Season of Angels. So I went from like a Western summer book, in, in my opinion, to a Christmas book. And this seems to be about three angels and a Scrooge character. I've never read um, any of her like mystical books. I think like Mr. Miracle is the other I think also Christmas series, of course, that um, has something to do with angels, I believe. And I've only read her, like, contemporary romance. So we'll see what I think of her, like, I don't know, magical realism, mystical books. We'll see. I then have a Beverly Cleary book. This is The Mouse and the Motorcycle. And I've only read uh, the Romana Quimby series and the uh, two books on her memoirs. Um, so this is, like, a totally different, I don't know, kind of booked, <laughs> good book for me. Because, like, I, don't, I think I mentioned before, I don't really care for books where the main character has like is an animal that can talk and stuff it's not really my my jam but if anyone can sway me on that it would probably be Beverly Cleary um I didn't have uh, Esther Forbes uh Johnny Tremaine this I recently read this I don't know a couple months ago um as part of the Newbery winner and honor um list and at the time I'd only read it on audio because um, my library didn't have an e-copy. So I was really happy to find this because I really liked this book as well as her Paul Revere biography. And so yeah, I was happy to add this to my collection because this for sure would be one I'm gonna go back. Once I finish this huge long project of reading the Newberry um, list, um, this is one I would wanna reread. Uh, I have then the Boxcar Children uh, series. This is book one, I just happened to find it. And then I have book 31, which has like the classic cover which I um I really wish this one was like that but because uh, like I, I don't know it's like it has like updated artwork and stuff but I just I really like the, the like the drawing um this is it's pretty beat up it has like scratches on the main um on this picture here but you know there's just, like, little quick reads and then I'll just take them to the little free library this is the mystery of the singing ghost and then this one just has the boxcar children uh name but yeah these will be nice um rereads for me um uh, going back through like because I started reading these, I think in second, for sure third grade, but maybe second as well. And I only read those during that time period. I, don't, I didn't really pick them up after that. Uh, but yeah, it'd be nice to revisit like eight and nine year old uh, reads. Um, then I have Just Victoria by Shelley Nielsen. And I um, read like an 80s uh, kind of book uh, by Eve Bunting a couple months ago. And I just, I really liked it. And so when I saw this cover. Um, I was like, I'm going to try a different author. I, the Eve Bunting I had heard of, and I knew, like, she you know, wrote some really good books. But this one I, I haven't. But, you know, I, I could be uh, surprised and, and really, really like it. I don't know. This is, um, it's about um, a girl dreading starting junior high. And I can for sure relate because um, I did not like starting middle school. Like, that just, like, that whole, like, you know, changing from elementary to middle school. But the school that I went to also had high school combined into the middle school because it was such a small um school group school county and so um so yeah like you know seeing like seniors and stuff walk around like when you're just like a lowly sixth grader it was a lot to deal with in a way um I did have some more like those mango classics that I picked up because I recently picked up uh, Pride and Prejudice and um Anne of Green Gables and so I really really enjoyed my read of Pride and Prejudice so I was like I'm gonna go back and see what else that they have that caught my eye. And so I have The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. And this one is a little bit different. Instead of having all black and white, when you see the letter A, it is um, is in the color red. And that'll happen throughout the whole the whole book here. And so yeah, this is gonna be a, a fun re like, I guess, you know, reread for me. Um, and I'll probably read that in October. And then I have another uh, Jane Austen book to add to my collection. This is Sense and Sensibility. Um, they also have Emma, but this one, Emma wasn't at the Barnes and Noble that I went to. So I, I just have, I have these two and then I will get, um, 
you know, that one when I see it. I'll see if I need more artwork I can show you. Because I know every now and then they have, like, a full page, like, across the board. Um, picture. I, I, yeah, I can't find any. But here's, like, some, like, more like a full page art cell. Um, then I have, let's see, The Western Canon, The Books in the School, in the School of the Ages by Harold Bloom. And um, I've never read Harold Bloom, but and I've heard him talked about. And um, I've read some Western canon books. And um, so this would be interesting to, like, I don't know, push me to read more. And I, I was just scrolling by and I saw Pride and Prejudice pop up, which is, you know, perfect timing there. But um, anyway, uh, I've read some books in the Western canon. And I do have, a, like, a goal to read, you know, more of those, like, canonical works. And so this will be nice to read and, you know, give me that motivation. Not that you necessarily need motivation, but it'd be nice to read, you know, people's, like, opinions and, like, critical essays or something, something on it um, before you get into it. And then I have um, Annie on My Mind by Nancy Garden. And I read this, like, two or three years ago on ebook, and so I saw this, I was like, oh, you know, perfect reread time. Even though, you know, I could reread on an ebook, uh, you know, I, I saw this, I was like, okay, yeah, this would be a good reread. Um, this is about a girl who... She is a teenager, and so she's, like, discovering herself, and she comes to find out that she likes, um, likes girls, and so she uh, forms a friendship, and then a relationship happens, and that's just, like, that formative years of, um, you know, finding, you know, what your sexuality is, and so, yeah, this was just a, a nice, like, sweet story, if I, um, from what I remember. Then ha I have The Night Swimmers by Betsy Byers. And I saw those at a free library. And it was just like the cover that I really liked. It's kind of like creepy um, summer camp. Um, cover. It's a really like a dark grim cover. But excuse me. Now let's see. Let's see what it's about. Because I, I just saw the cover and I grabbed it. Um, it says, no, excuse me. How can Retta be angry with her father for leaving her alone with her brothers at night while he performs as a singer? Um, after all, he has a job to do and she has hers. Um, ever since her, um, their, their mother died, uh, Retta has been responsible for taking care of her younger brothers and running the house. When she discovers a swimming pool uh, in a neighbor's yard, nighttime swimming becomes the perfect entertainment for the three of them. Retta seems to have everything under control until Johnny's new friend has other plans for him at night. And the little Ro and, and little Roy hates to be left out of anything. So, yeah, we'll see if there's some, like, I don't know, like horror aspects of this because yeah it just it looks spooky but it might not be spooky i don't know we'll see we'll see what that neighbor's up to <laughs> okay so then i have some books i found um not, yeah bought at um a library bookstore and this is uh edith warden's um the custom of the country of the country i've only read one edith warden book and i, I need to remedy that because she's a really good author and um she's wrote um you know some pretty good books uh let's see she's written um uh, Ethan Fromm, The Reef, The Custom of the Country, Summer, The Age of Innocence, and The Age of Innocence is the one I read. But I really like this, um, like the Penguin Classic with the black spine and the white here. I mean, I have a few on my shelf, so this would be a nice addition to add. I'm at, uh, let's see, I have My Antonia by Willa Cather, and this is another book I've read before, but I just, I really like, like the cover with the wheat, um, because she wrote a lot of, like, books set in Nebraska, and, um, but I know I, way back, way back when, like years ago, when I did, um, Kelly's, um, what is it, My Neck of the Woods tag, and when I was searching for authors that, um, were born in Virginia, where I was from, Willa Cather actually, uh, popped up because she was, she was born there, and she lived there, for, I think, if I remember from my research, it was something like four or five years of her life, and then they moved to Nebraska, so technically she's from Virginia, but, you know, she, of course, she's known for, for Nebraska, and so, yeah. Really like this cover, and it's a, it's a good book as well. Let's see. I then have um, all the Mowgli stories by Rudyard Kipling, and I've never read um, the Jungle Book or anything. I just saw this, and there's some illustrations here, I believe, um, throughout. Like there's some like drawings and stuff, and it has like really like old book musty smell to it. So um, this whole <laughs> will give me the prompt to read the Jungle Book, and then um, you know these might be you know additional stories or they could be pulled out from the jungle book for all i know well i'll find out um i then have roseman pilcher's winter solstice and i had found um uh september and the shell seekers um 
recently and so when I saw more books by her and here she is on the back here I wanted to pick them up because these are all like going back through memory lane in a way for me from um, reading them in middle school and high school and then I have coming home and they all seem to have, like this flower design and when I read them they were all um mass market paperbacks so it's nice to have all these hardcovers except shell seekers that one is the only one I've gotten that um is like when I read them in this in addition but I do like the bigger print than the teeny tiny um <laughs> the teeny tiny print you know you know I don't know what I'm showing you. you all know what I'm talking about the teeny tiny print of mass markets I have a Flannery a life of Flannery O'Connor by Brad Gooch and I had read um, a biography of uh, Marjorie Ra uh, Kenan Rollins. And so I'm on like, I'm on a roll of trying to find um, or, or, you know, read uh, books about authors. And so, yeah, Flannery O'Connor, I, I for sure was interested in that. And there's some pictures in here of her. Um, and she's, she's on the cover as well. I'm thinking I'm going to read this and then kind of like flip back and forth between reading this and reading her short, short story um, collection that I have on my shelf here. And then the last one is um, another Western. This is Comanche Moon, the final volume of the Lonesome Dove series uh, by Larry McMurtry. And this is a really, it has a really nice uh, cover with the clouds. And I've read the, um, the first book in this series and, of course, Lonesome Dove multiple times. But I just need to read book two. And four. Um, and so now I have the fourth. I just need to get the, the second one. So those are the, the last books that um, I have for July. I think I have more than enough now. <laughs> if I didn't have enough before. Um, but yeah, let me know um, if you've read any of these books. And I will talk to you soon. Thanks, book two.